Jesus' name. We're finishing up our series this week uh, called Beyond the 52. It kind of motivates, hopefully it motivates you. I know as I'm preparing for it, it motivates me to say, okay, we got to move out of the idea of just we do church on Sunday mornings. That's it. Like, uh, you know, some of us were raised a little bit that way where it's like, it's Sunday, that's just church day. And then every other day is like normal and we argue and, uh, and we fight at home. You know, it's like, no, no, it's like we want to do church all the time. And last week I talked about like church is everywhere. Like, it's happening everywhere. This is what we know from Scripture, that if you call yourself a person who is the follower of Christ, then you just know that church is happening all around us. Church is happening. He says, I am going to build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail. The gates of hell will not prevail against it. And we're a part of that. Like, we're a part of that, not just today, not just on Sunday mornings, but all the time. So this series, we've been talking about kind of beyond the 52 Sundays, like beyond just the 52 Sundays, what do we do? Like, like what, are we a re- what are we really a part of? And so if you've missed it, go back and uh, you can look at it on our website. There's media on an app. You know, we have an app, like you can go, there's an app for that. Like when you talk about like messages and growth and reading plans and Bible, like there's an app for that. You can go on the app store and look for SEC, South Community Church. We're there, um, and it's just, you can find all of that. Last, this, this last part, part three, this is it, okay? And I want you to hear this today in a way that should give you great hope. In anything that you're doing, wherever you're feeling at today, that, that what God assigns, okay, what God assigns, he aligns. Okay, this is something you should take, and if you're like, I don't know if I'll ever come back to this church, but let me just tell you this one thing then, okay? As you leave, or as you're not going to be here, or you're moving, going back to home, wherever, what God, what God assigns, he will align it. He will put the, the, the places, the people, the situations. You have these stories. Like some of you have these stories where you know God has moved you. He's inspired you to do amazing things. And then it lined up for you. Like some of you have these great stories where you can tell that God did this, did this for us. Well, one of the things that he assigns us to do is to go, Right? One of the things he assigns us to do, uh, and, and there's not a ton of things he assigns us to do. Like you read in scripture, and he, he inspires us, he motivates us. But then one of the big things that he assigns us to do is to actually go and tell the story. Like to go and be ready to tell the story. And many times some of us will say, well, I want to like go to the nations. Like I'm going to go to the world, right? I'm gonna, and I'm going to make great impacts on the world. And some of us aren't really, like, we don't even know what's happening in our home, you know? Like, we want to go to the nations, but we don't really know the nations yet. And so today, as we're looking through this, all right, I want us to tar- start talking about what it means right around us to go, okay? But there's this video I saw this week, and it's Jimmy Kimmel, and it's kind of a hilarious look at the understanding of nations, okay? The understanding of how we want to go to the nations, all right? I think my guys in the back, they got it. You guys ready? Yeah. All right, now it's time for something. I don't know if this will be educational, but uh, the president is overseas. He's visiting Belgium, England, Scotland, and then his pal Putin in Finland. It's a big trip with many important ramifications. It's imperative that America has strong relationships with and knowledge about people in other lands. And that responsibility extends to all of us, not just the president. So we came up with a test. The test is very simple. When out on the street, we ask people who are passing by to name a country on a map. That's it. We had a map. We said, name a country, any country. <laughs> and here's how that went. Can you name any country on this map? Honestly, my geography is so horrible. I can't name anything, like Try nothing. <laughs> is this South Africa? Nope. We had the country of Asia. Nope, that's a continent, and uh, that's oops. Russia. Uh, I'm silly. That's okay. Um, man, it's been a while since I've been in school. That's uh, okay. Any country on the map. 
Africa. That's a continent. How about a country in Africa? Uh, I know South Africa is over here somewhere. No, it's, no, it's south. down here, yeah. Yeah, it's south. Oops. Can you name any country on this map? Yeah. Africa? That's a continent. Oh, God. <laughs> Can you name any countries in Africa? God, no, who knows stuff like that? Can you name any country on this map? Yes, um, Africa. That's a continent. Oh, country, um, um. Greenland or Iceland or something? That's Alaska. Um, any country. I mean, not oh. And on the entire map. Um, this is so horrible. Where's America? I would say this big one, but I'm probably wrong. You're definitely wrong. Okay. Can you name any country on this map? Oh my gosh. Shouldn't I be taught this in school? I would hope so. <laughs> South America? That's a continent. Oh my god. Then... How about a country in South America? Um, yeah. Honduras is here, 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 somewhere here. Can you name any country in Europe? Is this one Europe? No. This one? No. Um. <laughs> Can you name a single country in Africa? Was this Africa? No, again, that's South America. <laughs> no idea. Can you name a country in South America? OK, this is South America. Yes, can you name a country in it? No, I can't. Did you go to high school? Yes. Did you go to college? Yeah, that's the sad part. Argentina, Chile. Bolivia, Brazil, Peru, Colombia, Venezuela, Mexico, United States, Canada, Greenland, Iceland, Australia, New Zealand, um, Papua New Guinea. Oh, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> Well, if you didn't believe that children are our future before, now you do. <laughs> well done, everybody. I am Jimmy Kimmel, and I am not allowed to eat this cookie <laughs> until you click the subscribe button. So please. Okay, so most of the time, here's the, the, here's the deal. Most of the time, like, we're excited about going to the nations. Like, we're excited about going to the nations, but, and we should be. Like, we should be excited, but, but here's the deal. We'll never know the nations. We'll never know the nations until we know our neighbor. Okay, let me say that again. We'll never know the nations until we actually know our neighbor. And God has given you, here's the thing, God has given you an assignment. He's given you an assignment, and I'm not sure many of us, uh, I know for me when I was yeah, definitely into my faith, younger in my faith, I'm like, there, what am I going to do? What's my purpose? Like, what, all of us are searching for purpose, right? We want to know if this is the occupation I should be doing. Is this what I should be doing in this relationship? What is God calling me to do? Well, let me just tell you, there's a real clear purpose that God calls us to through his son, Jesus, okay? Through the word, through his mouth, to his people, so huge before he left. And he says, man... This idea that if you really love me, if you say that you really love me, then you have a job to do. You've got an assignment to do. And it's not a suggestion. It's not a suggestion that we have. It's like just, it's not a good idea. It's like maybe a good idea to do. It's not, it's not just a, it's not just like something where we say, well, maybe I should do it or, or someone else can do it in, in the church. That's not for me. It's a job that we have. It's, it's a calling that we have. And it's a goal that we have. Like every one of us who say that we are calling on the name of Jesus, that we, as we're singing those songs and we're saying, no, I believe, I believe in Jesus. Not just like the demons believe in Jesus. No, not just that way. Like, no, I believe in Jesus as the son of God. You've said the prayer. So, so, so this, that includes you then, that you have this great purpose and where you feel purposeless today, where you feel like I'm just kind of wandering in the desert. That's not true. It's the lie of the enemy because you have a purpose. And it's this, it's this last moment where Jesus is with the disciples. It's this, this mic drop moment where he's just had this, this last time with them. And we're going to hear about that today. It's the last thing Jesus said, what we hear out of Acts, okay? And, and it's, again, it's, what, it's this idea of what God assigns, what God assigns, he's going to align. What God assigns, he's going to align. So follow along in your Bible. If you don't have a Bible today, you can always grab a free book, paper, 
all that Turning the Pages Bible in the back. It's on the, on the right on the back stand. You can buy that, or not buy that. You can have that. And then we have an app that you don't have to buy. It's free. It's an app on the App Store. You can go and you can follow along on all the notes. Take notes. Sometimes when you just sit there and you're like, oh, don't you zone off into, I mean, we are everywhere. We're everywhere. So try to take notes today. Um, use a pen if you want or use the app. Take notes. And if something's happening in the service today, uh, in the message where you want to share it with a friend, please do that, all right? So there's this moment, Acts 1, okay? Acts 1, and starting in verse 7, okay? Most, we're going to go right into 8, but in verse 7, there's just, I wanted to read that first, although we're, 8 is kind of like the crux as we go 8, 9, and 10 today, but verse 7, we have to say something about because we can fall into this, where we, we go, okay, Jesus, like, okay, you're here. Now, what do we do, Jesus? Like, like we're, do we just stand here and wait now? What, when are you coming back? Like, what's going to happen? We, that's all okay to do, like, right? We ask those questions because the disciples themselves sat there and asked the same questions. Like, what do we do then? Like, what do we just, do we just kind of put our heads down and then just wait for you to come back? Is that what we do? Do we just kind of just, just slowly walk through life and just not really look around for any cues or ideas and we just wait for you to come back? Do we really not share these experiences that we had with you? Do we really not tell people that you changed water to wine? Do we really not say that? Do we really not say, oh, you healed? We saw you heal the blind. We saw you heal the lame. Or do we just kind of close our eyes and do that? When are you coming back, Jesus? When are you coming back? Verse 7, he replied, he said, no, 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 no. The Father alone has the authority to set those dates. The Father alone has the authority. Wow, what power he's saying. Jesus, the one to whom we're singing to today. He says, no, wait, I don't even have that authority as you're asking. The Father alone has the authority to set those dates and those times. And he goes, and they are not for you to know. But don't we get bogged down in that? Don't we get bogged down in the heavenlies? We get bogged down in, oh, I'm just going to I'm just going to trudge my way through life. I'm just going to just do what I can. I'm just going to help. I'm going to raise my family as good as I can. I'm going to do my job and make as, you know, as much money as I can, but I will still be a part of it and go to a church and and, it, and at times it makes us feel pretty good because we're just waiting for the end. And when is that going to be? God, I, Jesus, when, come on, when is it going to be? And he would not let them rest on that. And it's like, we, that's for us. We can't rest on that today. We can't be ones who say, I'm just waiting for it all to end. You know, like John said in Revelation, just come, Lord Jesus, come. As we look around at culture, we just want to say, I just want it to end. And in the midst of that, we become paralyzed. And we don't do anything for the kingdom. We sleep through it. We sleep through life and we say, I'm not doing anything. I'll just be paralyzed. We weren't called to that. This was the last, these were the last, mo if, you, if you don't get what I'm getting yet, that these were the last moments Jesus had on earth, the last moments, the last things he was saying and taking the importance of those things. So he, he says, no, it, the, all the dates of when I'm coming back and when all of that, and God knows all of that because there's lots of people that need God and there's lots of people that need Jesus and there's lots of people that need to be saved before it all goes down. So that's not for you to know. But here's what, st stop getting wrapped up in the rapture. Stop getting wrapped up in the rapture. Many of us can do that. We st stop getting wrapped up in the rapture. And he says, because this is the work we do. Verse 8, he says, okay, so here's what we'll do. He says, but you, but you, followers of Christ, ones who call themselves followers of Christ, will be given, what does he say? You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Please look at the person next to you and say, it's not weird. Yeah, but, and, and, and oh, because we think the Holy Spirit is weird sometimes. Because we think, oh, ooh, I, want, I like the God thing. We can talk about, you know, God. Even the Jesus thing, that's cool. Died on the cross, rose from the dead. That's kind of weird. But then we get to the Holy Spirit thing, and it's like, ooh, weird. Like he's flying around. What is, what is happening? We don't have any other mandates right here. We don't have any other words from Jesus other than saying that the Holy Spirit's coming down. He's going to be the Holy Counselor. He's going to be the one that's with you. We don't have any other. And some of us want to say this. Some of us want to say this. We want to say, oh, no, no, well, no, Jesus. I got Jesus. And you're like, the Trinity, they're all together, so I can just say Jesus or whatever. No, the Trinity's at work, right? 
God did a lot of good creation and all of that, and then Jesus had to do what he did. But the Bible says he's not. He is at the right hand of God the Father. That's where he's at, waiting to judge the quick, right, and the dead. He is at the right hand of God the Father. Then what, then, uh uh-oh, what's left then? If Jesus is there and God did his thing, what do we have left of the Trinity? Look at the person next to you and say, we got the Spirit. Yeah, there's the promise of the Holy Spirit, right? And, 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 and if you fall in line, young people, if you fall in line, young believers, if you fall in line, old believers who are like, oh, I don't really talk about the Spirit, you are missing out on what the last few things Jesus said is coming down to be with you. The counselor, the comforter, right? But more importantly, as we're looking at it today, when you have a mission and a job to do, when you are called by God, the only way it's going to be accomplished is that you believe that the Spirit is with you. That's the only way. You, I can't make up something else for you. I have to tell you that, that when you aren't big enough for the job and when you aren't smart enough for the job and when you don't feel like you know what you need to say in that moment to, to share in that moment, to say the right things, whatever, the Holy Spirit is the one who's speaking for you. The Bible says it, right? Like he would give people great calls and missions to go to places and they would say, Moses, I don't have the words. I don't know. I, I'm st- I, st- I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. No, I don't know. And he said, don't worry, I'm with you. I, I, I'm with you. What was with him was the spirit of the Lord, right? The apostle Paul said, no, no, I went and killed these people. I was a part of being a part of this great persecution, and you want me now to go to, this, this, to the Gentiles? You want me to, to be amongst the Jews? You want me to do it? I don't even know what to say. I don't know how to be the good Christian. I'm a Jew. I don't know how to do that. And what did he say? The Spirit of the Lord will be with you. I will give you the words. You cannot throw the Spirit out when you want to do something great for the Lord. When you want to have great mission for the Lord, you'll receive power and it will come upon you. And you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere, about me everywhere. And he's, again, this is, this is again how it starts because we want to say we'll go to the nations, right? But we don't know the nations. We don't know the nations. We've got to know here first. And he says, in Jerusalem and throughout Judea and in Samaria and then to the ends of the earth. And he wanted them to know, just like he wants you to know today, you're qualified. Stop saying you're not qualified. I don't know the word. I don't know. I don't know the Bible as well. I hear this so many times. I don't know the scriptures are good enough. I'm just going to, I don't want to say anything, okay? And some of us, we, we, we minimize our spirit within us, the Holy Spirit power. When you called on the name of Christ in salvation, the Holy Spirit came upon you. You have minimized the spirit when you say you're not qualified. Can you hear me? I'm just being real. We minimize the Holy Spirit fire in us when we say, I don't have the words to say, so I'm not going to say something. I'm not going to hold my brother accountable. I don't know what to say. I don't have the words. You have the Holy Spirit fire within you. You're qualified. It's the Holy Spirit. It's the one who blew open the the tomb and rose Jesus from the dead. It's that same power that you're in your break room at your work and you see a broken person that you walk over to on the same power that broke the, that broke the grave, that rolled the rock away, is the same power. I'm not making all this up. It's the same power that broke that away that walks you over a few steps to say a word of encouragement and life into somebody. It's the same spirit. You can't make it up. It's a broken person down the hallway at school who walks close to the lockers, young people. Every day, day in, day out, because that's the place for them. I don't want to walk down the middle. You know how it works. The person walking real close to the locker has no security. And the same power that that rose Jesus from the dead, the same spirit, is the same spirit that moves people to provide security for others. There's no excuses. We don't have excuses today because it's the same Holy Spirit power. And you have a story to tell. Here's the thing today is that as he's saying this, he tells them right there. He says, you're going to go and you're going to be my witnesses. And a witness is, you know what a witness is? A witness is you have a story to tell. Like, like you have a story. And, and don't say, I don't have the testimony of being a druggie. I don't need, a, I, don't, I, don't have, I don't have that testimony where some, something happened terrible. My house burned down and then Jesus was there. So I don't tell anybody my story. 
Stop with that. You've again minimized the power of Jesus Christ. You've minimized what he's done in your life. And it doesn't always have to be a story of tragedy. It could be a story. I, I always wondered this. Like somebody who has not got into tragedy, who's not got into drunkenness, who's not got into drugs, who's maybe been raised in the church, who's called on the name of Christ since VBS, you know, and they get there and they're like, no, I've, I've, I don't have those crazy stories, so I don't really talk about it. You have the story that he, re, he, he protected you. You have the story that he kept you in his hands and in his arms. Tell the story. He says, just be a witness. Be a witness. Your story will be the story. See, that's the thing. We want, we're thinking, oh, you know, I, I'll just invite random people and stuff. No, there's so many people around you that just want to hear the story. And they'll say, no, you need to read the Bible and then you can come to church. You think that works? No. It didn't work in the beginning because they didn't have the Bible. Do you know that? <laughs> oh, my goodness. They had a story. And the story was the impact of Jesus upon those people. And so they would go around and they'd say, I just need to tell you the story. I'm going to go around and I'm going to be the person who tells you the witness, the story. And people, people, when we're talking about people like planning visits, people wanting to come to church, they're not just going to, I mean, for the most part, I mean, Facebook ads and all of that stuff's great. They're not just going to plan visits. I mean, random. It's going to be from your stories. It's going to be, and you're like, I don't know how to evangelize. I don't know how to do that. No, no, no. You, it's built into you already. It's built into you from what God has done for you, and you're just telling the story. You're telling the story of the love you have for your children. You're telling the story of the marriage that you have that is healthy. You're telling the story of, of your job flourishing. You're telling the story that you tied, and he flourished your life. He gave you great health. You're just telling the stories. And we're wondering where this comes from. It's from our story. You have a story to tell. And when those stories are told, they're, they're, when you know God is working and you tell somebody those stories, they're drawn to God, right? Right? Okay, so I got to tell you this, this story. Okay, this is my story. And this was just happened to me a few weeks ago. They don't listen. They don't happen all the time. But when they do happen, you, you see them and you say, God, that's you. And you, then you want to tell people. So I'm trying to tell everybody that I can tell, right? Um, some of you may not know I have uh, MS is what I have. And it's, it's, it's walking fine, jumping, dancing MS, all right? So see, it's fine. I mean, it's good. So that, that right here is a part of my story. So one of the things I like to do is to, is to use parts of my life to help draw people to Jesus and the church. And one of those things I do is, um, is a coach. I'm a baseball coach. And one of my families who I got to coach um, wanted to have a, a coffee with me the other day. And, and, and it was just the dad. He said, okay, hey, can I have coffee? And so I was like, yeah, cool. We're going to talk about your son, you know, playing baseball or something, you know, or maybe he wants to play more. I don't know. And so we go to Starbucks and we're, we're sitting down, but then I see the wife sitting there too. And I come in, you know, my pastor side now comes in and I'm like, oh no, what is this? What is this going to be? You know, I see both of them now and his face is not like his face is like, it was, the, it was the face of, like, I screwed up face, kind of, you know? So I was like, what did you do, man? I'm like, oh, <laughs> man, you know? And so I'm having all these thoughts go through my head. And so I sit down, and, we're, and we're, we're, we get there, and, and he starts to get emotional. He starts to get emotional and starts to, to, to cry, you know, cry a little bit. And I'm like, now I definitely know what's going on. I'm like, you did something bad, you know? And I'm like, we're going to, I'm already figuring out ways how we're, this is going to, we're going to fix this or whatever. And so he, he says, he, she goes, he's not going to be able to tell you. And, and I'm like, okay. And she says, uh, I think that I might be diagnosed with MS. And so I'm looking at her. I'm like, really? And I'm like, why did you call me? I know some of you are like, what a jerk, okay? <laughs> Stick with me, all right? And her look was the same as probably yours. And his, he was like, what do you, you're a pastor. You're supposed to do this. You're supposed to pray for us. That's what we wanted, you know? And I'm like, and I'm like no, no. Like, I know I'm going to pray for you, and, and that's going to be, uh, we're going to pray, right? But I don't tell people that I have MS all the time. They didn't know I had MS. And they're looking at me, and I said, you know I have MS, right? And the look on his face changed. I, you know how joy takes a while? Like, you know, joy takes a while to, to build in somebody, and then you see, you know, it goes a period of time. Then they have, in that moment, I, I've, I've never seen it, that, I mean, very few times where joy changed in the face. Because, because 
they've seen me with MS for two years. I said, I've had this since Father's Day of 17 or 18, whenever it was. I've had this since then. And I said, have you thought that I've, I mean, I've done weird things, but have you, I mean, I didn't just walk out to the mound and like trip and fall and you'd be like, what's wrong with him? He's weird. What's wrong? Like, no, I've lived my, I've, you've seen me walking around and God has done this in my life and he'll do the same for you. And the looks on their faces changed, right? It changed from a look of a death sentence, right? To education a little bit and then to it's going to be Okay right? You have a story. You have a story to tell. You have a story to let people know who are living in darkness, who are living in struggle. You have a story to say, listen, I gave my life over to the Lord. I want to tell you what's happened. They're going to say, oh, Jesus stuff. No, no, no. No, tell the story about he resurrected and changed your life. Tell the story. You have a story. Verse 9, he says, after saying this, here's what he did. After saying this, <clears throat> excuse me, he was taken up into a cloud, all right? Here's the part now where some of us kind of jump off the train. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry, because I was actually reading this before I got up here, and I was thinking, okay, here's the part I think where some people jump off the train, because they're like, oh, the Jesus stuff rose from the dead. I think I can get there, you know, and, and, then, and then we can sing songs. But you're about to talk about some of the stuff that's like, ah, uh, special effects, man. Like, that's, that's some CGI, that's some CGI, like right now you can't, you go to every movie, it's CGI, right? Like you're, you're like, oh, that's some good CGI, you know, back in Star Wars days, they were like paper stuff, they were making, you know, they were like, some guy was holding it with a fish, with a fish string or whatever, and you're like, wow, look at that, you know, and that was, you know, more real to us. Now it's like, there's some CGI. So when we read some of this stuff here, I think we instantly go to the CGI mode. Like, like, okay, this is, this is, this is really not, not real. And it'll test your faith, really. It'll test your faith to say, do I really believe this? And he says, after saying this, it says, he was taken up into a cloud while they were watching. And they could look, no longer see him. Can you imagine how long that they sat there? You ever seen a balloon go up? Like you let the, for some reason, we all want to sit and watch the balloon go as high as it can until it disappears. That's what I imagine was happening. Jesus, you know, he's like, I'm out of here, you know. He's floating up. and I don't think it was like a lightning or they would have said, you know, and for one, that would have been like the whole weird devil thing, you know. It's like, no, we're not going to do it like a bolt of lightning. Let's do it slowly, different than, you know, and let's let him flow up, you know, and they're just watching him go. And then it says, what it says, then as they strained, they strained to see him rising into heaven. They're like, you know, can you imagine that? <clears throat> you know, they're like, do you still see? I, you know, I see something up there. I still, how long that that took? And then two white-robed men. Again, you're, you're probably going to CGI right now. You're like, ah, come on. I don't, this is, I'm telling you, if you subscribe to Scripture and the story of Jesus Christ of Nazareth and the raising of the dead and the call on your life, then please don't put this in the CGI mode. All right? Two white-robed men suddenly stood among them, stood among them. What does he say, man? As they strained to see him rising into heaven, two white-robed men and suddenly stood among them. What's the next verse? Pump that up there. You have it? No? Yeah? Well, anyways, it says, what are, you, what are you sitting here looking for? This is what they're like. We, we do this. Why are you sitting here now? It's time to go. Like, again, we will be the ones who sit and strain our eyes or sit and just and, and, and trying to still sit here and look at Jesus and say, okay, I had that, that camp experience. I want that. And I'm just going to sit here and sit in that camp and that revival experience until Jesus comes back. I'm going to strain my eyes to this moment. And these, these angels are like, why are you sitting here looking? It's time to go. It's time to go to work. You've got a mission. And I think that's for many of us, right? Many of us, all of us, I've been there too, where we week in, week out, just sit here and try to come and get a piece of Jesus and a good look at him through the worship, a good look at him through dropping our kids off, just a good sliver of the community. I just want one more look. And the angels are saying to us, the two white, the men's in white robes, why are you still here? It's time to go to work. It's time to move. You have a mission. Each one of us have a mission. I kind of look at it this way, and we'll kind of, we're going to finish up with this. 
I think I call it like a mission tree is what it is. When we hear the word mission, we think of like Alicia and Megan sometimes. It's like, oh, there's only one kind of mission. It's going to Mexico. There's only one mission. You're going to go to Africa. You know, like, like that's what you're doing. This is, this is not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the life mission of furthering the gospel of Jesus Christ. Every one of us have a mission tree. I really believe this. And I've thought about this for, for a while, that, that no one's excluded from this either. Like, you're like, no, I don't do this part of it. That's, that's, that's for other people. So no one's excluded. And, and I either think you have, like, you start to develop or it works through your faith or through your faith journey, that you have a full tree. Like, you, like you, you impacted someone's life and you, you, you invited someone to church. You, you sat with them. You, you asked them to come to a community group. And it starts to, your tree starts to fill with this great fruit. Look at this picture of this first tree right here. Like, that's the tree. Like, that all started with a true faith in Christ, right? And then a movement within your own life to say, I have a mission. And I want to share my story. And I'm, now you start, some of you invited one person at one point to church. One person. And probably there's, now I'm looking around, there's probably six or seven people sitting here whose marriages have been changed, their lives have been changed because of one invite or one conversation you don't even know about that you had on the job site or at school. That the person may not even be here. They're living in another state right now and they're going to church and they're calling on the name of Jesus Christ and there's, that's one of their pieces of fruit up there. And it's your tree. And it's our mission tree. Like you have a You've been called to this. And then unfortunately, some of us have said no. We've made an excuse. You say, I don't, I don't know the Bible, or I don't like talking to people a lot, or I don't really like sharing about what Jesus did. And, and, and kingdom come, I feel like he'll say, why does your tree look like this next one? And I like this because it says the signs of kind of a dying tree, where it says de- just kind of decaying away. It's just dried up wood. No leaves, no sign of any, no sign of any life. Weak branches. I like to call these the mission trees. And you, your impact on people, you really kind of decide which one of your trees you're going to look like. Like which, which part of your sharing of your story will really impact people. God help us if we're this tree right here. He says this is the part of our life that if this is the part of life that you're doing and this is what it looks like, it's really only good for firewood. It's not good for life. God's assigned you today, not, not today, way back when, right, with the disciples. He said, you're assigned, like you've been assigned today for a mission. And you're so worried, me too. I've, I've been worried, like, where is it going to happen, God? How is it going to happen? No, 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 don't worry about that, because what he assigns, he aligns. What he assigns, he aligns. For us, we've got to start looking for cues is what we've got to do. We've got to start looking for people who are hurting. Many of us want to be good at other things. We want to be good at our businesses. We want to be good at being moms and dads. We want to be the best sports parent. Oh, I want to take them. I'm with you on this. I want to take them to the best teams. We want to do, I'm going to be the best at that. And all the while, we're missing out on the cues for the Holy Spirit. And God's assigning it today. And when he does that, he aligns it for you. I think we got to stop worrying about that. This, this uh, year, um, we've, we've had a goal. We have a goal, and it's, it's, it's to see 200 people planning visits to the church. And I told our, our team back there, as, even as I'm talking about it, the temptation is to feel numerical, right? The temptation is to feel oh, we got a number, it's on the back, and, and oh, we just want to see the scoreboard go down or whatever. And I'm so reminded by Scripture. 
in 1 Peter 2, where he's saying that I want people that you come across to know that they are royalty, that they are called into royalty so that the darkness in their life would go away. So sitting here today, sitting here today, you're, you may say this, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I don't know the call. Well, here's what we do know. We're a part of the great commission to go. And here's what else you know. Your church has given you a tool to help go and take people from a peasant life experience into the kingdom of God. We've given it to you. And we're joining you in that. And man, my eyes are wide open as I hope yours are too. To say, okay, I have a mission now. Are people hurting around me? Not just on Sunday. Come on. Unless you stop by a quick trip and you're like, oh, there's a hurting person Sunday. I'll talk to him right now. No, it's all the time. But there's people around us that God's saying, all right, you said you want to be a part of the mission. You were, you were saved. The last things I said was now go into your neighborhoods and into your workplaces and into your towns and into Latvia and into Las Vegas and go into your places and tell them about the story. This morning, that feeling that's coming over you of this, this probably a weight is the same weight that I feel today. And, 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 it, and it's heavy a little bit. But let me tell you what the book of Isaiah says. Isaiah 41.10. says, don't be afraid. We've seen this in scripture, right? Many times. He said, don't be afraid. He says, for I am with you. Don't be discouraged. He says, for I am your God and I will strengthen you and help you. I will hold you up with my victorious right hand. Isaiah 41 10. The weight is that weight of responsibility of a believer, that weight of, man, I have a call and a duty and a job to do, feels heavy. And he knew that. But he said, don't be afraid. What Jesus say for, for, I know it's heavy, but my yoke, I will take upon me. I will take that yoke and make it easy. What a promise we have. Don't be discouraged, for I am your God, and I will strengthen you and help you. I will hold you up with my victorious right hand. The pictures of the trees a minute ago was a tree that flourished, right? I want you to know something. You're in the tree. You're flourishing too. And some of us get so overwhelmed of going and like, oh, I'm just going to be working and slaving for God you're in the tree and you fruitful everything you're a part of will grow everything you put your hands in in the name of Jesus Christ will flourish as well I believe that for us I hope that's you today I hope you are making a decision today I really do I hope you're making a decision today to say okay I'm I'm in the mission I'm, I'm ready to go. I'm not, I don't have to go to another country. I'm now. And the mission starts at home. It starts today with you saying, maybe to your family, we're going to be real followers of Jesus in our home. We're going to watch the things that we say. We're going to watch the things that maybe we're watching. We're going to, the way we t- talk to each other, maybe around our children. We're going to pray more for our children. Like your, your mission starts right in your house, and then it goes out. And then he flourishes everything. It's the tree. I can't show it again. You say the mission, you join it, and that's the thing you're hoping for. Your children, your marriage, your business, your life. Right there. Let's pray this morning. Heavenly Father, these promises that we just heard from Scripture today, gosh, I pray that we would join this mission. Jesus speaking to us with great clarity says, I'll give you the Holy Spirit. He will be your counselor. He will be with you today. If there's any fear in that today, I pray, God, that you would squelch that fear. 
that your love of your Holy Spirit would be upon us, God, knowing that he, he is the holy counselor of our lives. Father, let us make a decision today. Father, if we're far away from you today, if we're sitting here in this place, we're far away from you today, I pray that we'd make a decision right now. Maybe nobody else knows about it. Maybe not even our spouse. Maybe we're just right now making a decision for you that I want to walk closely with you. Father, I pray that decision will be made right now. In boldness, that this person right now would say, I will walk with you closely. I will draw near to you, you will draw near to me. I want to join the mission. Father, I pray that you would send cues the way of every one of us, that you would challenge us. Father, I know that's scary for many of us. I pray that the cues, that you would send the cue and say, you're on. The Holy Spirit saying, you're on stage. Go, you're on. He needs help. She needs help. She's calling on it. The post she just made on Facebook, send her a private message. Say that you have a story. Tell your story. I'm praying, Father, you would give these cues and these opportunities for each and every one of us as we grow your church, that we help people know that they can be called into a royal priesthood, a priesthood led by Jesus Christ, the one who brings light in darkness. Thank you, Jesus, today. Father, in this last moment, in these last songs, Father, I pray that you would, in a way, break our hearts for what breaks yours. We honor you today. Let's stand this morning.